Okay, so my last video in the sequence, I customized this HTML block here and created this bit of text up here. Fantastic, hooray, yay. Now I'm continuing down here and going to start building these bits and elements further down the page. Uh, by the way, if you're watching this as the first video in the sequence, my name's Peter Buey. I'm from the Joomla Beat podcast, and I am also doing this video for joomtraining.com.au to show you how to build a T3 template from scratch from a working design into a working website using Joomla, Less, and the T3 framework. Make sense? All right. So I'm at this stage here where I'm doing the news and modules block, the upcoming events, uh, upcoming campaigns block, the and the online shop, the our shop block as well. So these are all modules. These two here will be custom HTML modules, and this one here will be a K2 content module, pulling in articles or items, I should say, get the terminology right, items from the news and events category within the site. All right, let's get to it. So I've already set up a couple of modules here. I can see text being pulled in from that particular category, a lot of Lauren Ipsum text, and I will need to customize those particular module blocks to get things up and running. The next two modules here, the upcoming campaigns and the online shop one aren't uh, enabled yet, or maybe they just don't exist, so I need to create them as well. So let's go into the back end of Joomla here and see if they are actually in here. So news and events, I can see. Online store, I can see. And upcoming campaigns, I can see as well. But they're probably not appearing because I've got the module names completely different to how they are in the template itself. So let's go back to PHP Storm and see what I have set up in here already. I have my main layout block, my layout here, MHA Home and I have the block being pulled in NUO. Now NUO stands for those module position names that are here. So it's news, upcoming events, uh, and our shop. So uh, we're, we're naming them something a little bit more meaningful than position one, two, and three. So news and events, upcoming. All right, let's have a look in here. Let's open up NUO and see what positions we have. So we have in this spotlight block here, we got news events, upcoming campaigns. That's wrong. Campaigns and our shop. So I'm just going to copy this down here. So this first line of code here will test to see if these modules exist. And if they do, then it will start outputting the code. And let's make the formatting of this a little bit nicer. So control A, I think it's command shift I. No. Nope. Um, Alt Shift I. Okay, let's let's get rid of that. I'm trying to find what the command is to auto index indent my text. Really, come on, what is it? Ah. Okay, it's not going to work for me. I'm going to have to go through the menu code. No, no code. Oh, no. oh, where is it? That's why I don't do this through the menu. I can never find anything I want. Shortcuts, people. Learn your shortcuts. Now I can't even find it. It should be a code. Auto indent lines. There it is. So shift whatever that key is. And I have got no idea. And why won't you indent? Let's try that again. I. Oh, I, no, I got, I got no idea what this code is. So sorry if you're watching this video and you're thinking I'm an idiot at the moment. Let's try this again. Code, I don't know. I don't know what, pit. <sighs> I could throw my laptop out the window. Okay, let's just do this manually. I'm very picky with how the code's formatted. It makes things a little bit easier to see. And I'll indent one more level. Cool, all right, that would do. News and events, upcoming campaigns, our shop. Let's rename these modules in those positions. Online shop, online store, completely wrong. Was our store, was our store, our shop, our shop. And the module position is called our shop, cool. It's uppercase as well, so let's do that. 
shop image to be inserted our shop cool and I'll get the module position name store it's not store it's R shop cool happy next next can have a lot of fun editing these videos. So our shop is done, news and events, I can see here, news, events, oh, that's already working, so I'm just gonna close that again. I have to configure this to pull in the right content, but uh, it will, that will do for now, I'm just gonna style things. Last but not least, upcoming campaigns. Go here, text, and images to be added. It was just the position, so it was upcoming cam paints. That looks right. Now I'll save and close, and those three positions should appear. Now I can actually start styling and do something in T3 rather than in Joomla. Ah, uh, why isn't campaigns coming up? Don't you love this when it happens? All right, let's upcoming, upcoming campaigns. Did I spell that right? Copy. Let's paste that there as well so I'm not getting any spelling errors. I'm hitting save. Let's make sure this is uploading, upload. Great, it's uploaded. Let's check my module position names. I'm sure as you're watching this, th these issues you'll come across as well. And you're kind of glad you watched this video and seen these issues so that you know how to overcome them. That's why I'm... Yes, that's right. I'm making these issues on purpose. All right, let's refresh this. Okay, I'm, go I'm about to throw something at this computer. Online campaigns. Ah, oh, didn't change the module position name. Or maybe it just didn't save. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Wrong tab. Upcoming campaigns, module positions, ordering. It Everything here looks good. It's not empty, so it's not being hidden. Prepare content. Yada, yada, yada. Upcoming campaigns. That's that's all right. Ah, I know. Something's wrong with the template. Save and close. Now, if I'm renaming things in T3, it will remember the original module position's name, especially if you defined it in the template itself. And what I mean is if I go to Template Manager and I go to my home template here and load up the layout, I'll see here a whole bunch of positions which marry up to what I'm doing on the code but all of these positions have some names in them and if I go down to upcoming campaign it should be upcoming campaigns plural plural there it is upcoming campaigns with an s at the end and campaigns that's spelled wrong Upcoming campaigns. Yes, that was a pain. Thank you. Save and close. And refresh and magically appears. Please. Thank you. All right. Now we can actually do some styling on this and make things look cool. So let's go back here. Um, first off, uh, K2. I'm going to turn off K2 styles. I don't want any K2 styling in this. Close. K2 items. Actually, want to get to the parameters thing. If I just disable all K2 styles, I have to do a lot more work to get K2 styles uh, happening across the site. But it doesn't need to load in that extra CSS style sheet, which is uh, an extra load in the site. jQuery library handling load no. Um, Joomla comes with that. I don't need to load that. Backend, load remote, uh, I shouldn't need to load that either, but um, let's just keep that there. Don't have any option to turn off, so jQuery library off. Save and close. 
So first off, that should strip away that yellow, then white, and uh, a lot of the styling around here. Refresh. Cool. Okay. It's uh, more of a raw format now. Now I need to go back into K2, this module here, and actually turn off a whole lot of things that I don't need appearing in that particular module. <clears throat> Excuse me. News and events. Now, if you haven't used K2 before, we, we like to use K2 quite a bit, especially for our, our clients that uh, are used to it. Um, this particular client's been using it for, for a long, long time, many, many years. And uh, they really like it. It's rolled out to a lot of their sites. So uh, let's clean things up here. Select one more categories. Yes, that's what I want. Item count. Two should be good. Let's see what the design has. One, two. Yep. Default, that should be good, good. What I really want to change is all these parameters further down. So I don't want the author showing, don't want the avatar showing, user descriptions, no, intro text, yes, word limits, let's go 25 words as a limit. Image, no, video, no, media captions, no, media credits, no, attachments tag, no, 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 hide, why isn't that hiding, hide, hide, hide. There we go. Hide, hit, hide. Read more of that can hide too. And comments, hide. Let's check if everything is hidden. Intro text I want. Title I want. Everything else should be hidden. Image, hide. Video, hide. Did I put a show before? Um, I don't know. Hide, 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 hide. Great. And the very last thing I want here is a custom link which says, see more. See more. Custom link, I'll just go hash for now. Oh, hang on, jump, jump. Should go to the news if it exists in the structure. News, news and media, fantastic. And everything else I'm happy with now. That should look a lot cleaner. Advance, no, don't need that. Don't need content plugins either. Don't need them to render on this particular module. Save and close. Refresh the front page. That should be down to 25 words, no images. Beautiful, nice, a little, a lot neater. RSS feed, I'll turn that off as well. Forgot to turn that off. RSS, there it is, auto generate, hide, save and close. And let's refresh, check if I'm happy with that output, and then I can start customizing and making it look cool. Oh, my little read more things, uh, see more is disappeared. I need that, I need to customize that, so I need to make sure it's working. Again, I apologize for uh, all this extra fluff around not being specific to, there it is. Not being specific to creating stuff with T3, but this is a whole build of the site. You might as well know all the bits and pieces and all the pains us developers or front-end devs have to actually go through to make a site. You understand why you pay for it. Okay, there we go, see more. Great, so now my output is getting closer to what I want. Of course, I don't have that image, that image, shop now, but they're all custom HTML bits and pieces, so I can change them later. So this font color here isn't black. Let's see what color it actually is. Normally I'll have a PSD and I'll be able to extract this color quite clearly from the layers, but I can't here. So I'm just going to go like this and that is my gray. Okay, let's go back out, zoom, zoom, zoom. Now, like I said, all, all this stuff should really be variables, but I'm taking a slight shortcut right now. Actually, I will define this as a variable, MHA variables. These are all crazy, whoops, what did I do? Where'd it go? That one, these are all crazy custom variables, so uh, just going to find out what the actual standardized variable colors are actually called. Now black, there we go, so I'm gonna copy these across. Accent colors, base and primary. So copy these into my custom variables file. And 
and I can do my customizations in here. So I'm going to make the darker, gray darker, that particular color. Now in the PSD or in the mock-up, there's this lighter gray here. CCC, okay, cool. So that's the standard, usually a standard color. EEE, CCC, it's not here. So I'm going to make this one here, CCC. So gray lighter and gray darker are the two colors that I'm using here. And they're the variables that are just defined. So I can go back to my, my main template.less file and start using those particular variables. All right, so I've done the tagline before. So this is now, what do I call this? NUO, NUO block news upcoming campaigns and terrible typing tonight campaigns and uh, what was the last one our shop styles great should really make my little star things yeah that would do you can tell it's a comment block it's blue Okay, so did I have a custom class around this? I should have class NUO. Great, so this is the class wrapper that I'm going to use around all the little CSS that I'm doing right now. All right, so anything I put under this, it's nested, will fall into that particular block. So my very first one is the news and events. So let's do these H3 headings first. So H3 across the top, H3. And the color was gray darker, wasn't it? At gray darker, fantastic. So now that will pull in the particular variable that I just changed before in my MHA variables file. I'll just save that so it uploads. Whoops, it saves everything. Didn't realize that. So there we go, and there was a border under this. So border, bottom. One pixel solid, solid, and it was at gray lighter. Great, and I think the line height was interesting. Line height, height at base, line height times two. So twice the base line height, which I think was 14, so it should be around 28. Save, do I save? Yep, cool, save, upload. So that should now be a slightly lighter gray with a very light underline under it. Fingers crossed. Refreshing, doing its thing. Cool, yeah. I got one right this first time. Okay, it's, it's uh, still fairly messy, but it's coming together slowly. So news, upcoming campaigns, online shop. Okay, cool. Let's customize this area here, which is a lot of the K2 stylings within this particular block area. Now, just notice something here. Where is it? That one, see more. That is very similar to these ones up here. So I'm going to copy that code in. Where was it? So here. Down, 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 too far. There we go. Now I don't want it for everything. There's a specific class on this, I believe. Inspector element. Module custom link. And it should be a dot custom module link. So I'll go like this. A dot custom module link. And I do the same down here. And hover. Save, refresh, let's see if that works. So it should only change this one and not these ones up here. I really don't want those ones to change. Beautiful, excellent, beautiful. Everything's falling into place for once. Let's change these titles across the top. Let's make them like this. So it's the orange and no underline, gotcha. I can do that. So there's probably some classes here that I can grab to make them very specific. It's module 
item title and it's dot. Yep, so dot module item title color. Now I should really have defined that variable before. Now let's see, this is why you define the variables. So now I'm not going back to my Photoshop file, my well, JPEG, finding the color, and I've already cleared that color. I'm not scrolling up trying to find the color because that could be it. No. Now that, that I know that one's it, but let's let's define these variables now. So I'm copying that color. It's the hover state, and the hover state for the site buttons is the orange. So let's actually define this in my variables file. Do I have an orange yet? Yep, cool. It's not the same one. Now that is going to be my orange across the entire uh, website. It's an accent color, accent variables. So orange. So now anytime I use that in my template, such as like that, orange, it will dynamically pull in that particular variable and I don't have to worry about have I got the hex code exactly right. Um, my girlfriend, who is actually my business partner and designer, creative director of the business, uh, PB Web Development, is very picky about the colors and the hex codes. If they're not exact, I get into trouble. Or one of the other developers gets into trouble. Usually I get into trouble because I'm in charge of the other developers and when she sees it, she blames me. Quality control. It's a good thing. Okay, let's change this as well. Paste. There we go. Let's keep things consistent. So now that title should be orange. I don't think there's any text decoration. Nope, nope. That looks good. Okay, let's save that for now. Refresh, that should go orange. Great, and my orange text is coming up. So now I have to get rid of these little list item decoration points and do some padding around this as well. So back to my CSS here, or my less, sorry. And list items, list style, none. That should take care of those little indents. I'm not sure if if there's anything else around that that I need to change. Let's go back up here, where's the list item? Great. Just uh, do some testing here. List style none. Uh, yeah, that just as I thought, I have to change the margin there. There it is, so UL. So UL margin zero. And this particular, oh, that should be fine. Save, upload. Wrong way. All right, and looks like those list styles are gone, looking good. Now I need to get rid of that margin. That's what I was doing, margin, margin. Margin zero, save. Should have compiled. Yeah, T3 module, margin left. Right, we have another style here. Let's get rid of that. Yes. Oh, I've forgotten what was T three module dot T three dash module UL. Right, that should take care of that. And because it's nested under M-H-A-N-U-O, should only apply within this level as well. So let's refresh. Great. Mm, okay, margins are all over the place. Great. So I'll put uh, zero. Let's make that, what's the top margin? Yep, so top margin one, M, right margin nothing. Ah, that should be good. So there's margin above and below and no margins on the left or the right of that. Cool. Looks like that last one might be in a list item. Ah, okay, it's got margins left and right. So let's custom list margin 1M and I'll put a zero at the end there as well. And that will clean the margin on the left and the right of that. So it will be 
flush with the rest of the alignment of the website. Great, looking better. Now let's check how it looks in the design. That looks like quite a bit more margin underneath. Uh, so let's just check what classes we have here to play around with. Module item intro text. So I'll go there. Let's put in that class, paste, and margin bottom. And I'll use the baseline height and times it by two as well. So double that 24, whatever was it, 28, 20, 20 something, 28, I think. Refresh, that should have uploaded by now, I think. Yep. Oh, okay, that's that's way too much. Ah, uh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's yeah, it could be about right. Uh, the design here is a little bit off. I'll keep it flush, and it needs to read more. So I'll just go to the back end of the website again, and add in that read more. Just see if I'm still logged in. Yep, sure am. Now, what was that? News and events needs a read more button. So I'll just change the parameters here in the K2 module so I can add that in. There it is. Read more link. Show. Save and close and refresh on the home page. Let's have a look how this looks now. Refresh again. Okay, why is not not showing? Not too phased right now. I can always fix that after, but it's uh, good to know what's what's going on here. Okay, where was it? Read more. Read more link. Show. Sure. Should be showing. Let's see if it's in the output. Just looking through the code here. <coughs> Excuse me. I might just actually trim that up. That that margin at the bottom does look quite big. And I can't see the output for that read more. I'm, I'm going to have to look into that. Let me just clean up this. I'll make it 1.5. A little bit less than what it was, and I have to look into that read more why it's not appearing. It's quite quite strange. Not too worried about that at the moment. Now let's get some of these other bits and pieces in. Let's do a little crop for this image. Copy, new. Um, I just trim it just that tiny bit. And I think I can trim, trim the top and bottom of that. Perfect. Cool. Uh, let's see if I can optimize this anymore. <coughs> nope, not JPEG. PNG, what about a GIF? Nope, PNG it is. PNG, and let's see if I can reduce the colors that little bit more. Eight and have a look at the quality of this. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, starting to lose it. Back to 16, a little bit better. Let's let's just keep it at that. And I'll put this here. It's a module, I'll put it in the module area. Mental health month dot PNG, great. <coughs> Now I have to enable that in this upcoming campaigns module. Save and close. Now in a previous video, I FTP'd all those files up the other module positions at the very top. Actually, I don't think that video recorded. I, it did record, there's no audio to it. I have to do a voiceover of the whole thing, which is going to be really strange. But uh, completely lost track of what I was doing. Upcoming campaigns, all right, upcoming campaigns, there we go. Need to add an image into this and I suspect some sort of read more. Yep, yeah, more info. Okay, let's go back to this. Custom output, text, yeah, image first. Okay, image, So image. I'm using the JCE editor here. It's uh, my preference in terms of editors for Joomla just has a couple of these real little nifty nice things that uh, I can play around with. Now last four to save modules, there we go. 
Mental Health Month. Nice little shortcuts with the Mac. And it is uploaded. Don't forget your alt text. Mental Health. That's not how you spell health. Health Month. October. And I go insert. Great. Now I'm just going to duplicate this text. Yeah, that would do. And I'll add in the text, more info. More info. Link this up. <clears throat> Link it to itself with a hash and go insert. Great. Okay, that one's done. Let's have a look at the design. So I've got one more image here for the shop. And I'll just do a crop like so. Looks like I'm pretty much spot on, especially with the top, so I won't trim it anymore. Ah, I've deselected. Now, Command D is, no, Command Shift D. Excellent. Love those shortcut keys. New. Now, the Command Shift D reselected my last selection, so if I accidentally clicked off, I can reselect it. It's amazing. Now, this one here will probably need to be a JPEG to keep that quality up in the face there. 13 kilobytes. Let's see if I can get this down any further. Just pressing down on the... Oh, okay, that's way too much. Somewhere around here. There we go. 53. 53%. Save and shop. All right. Now, where's that module? Here it is. Click on custom output too quick for it. Again, I'll upload an image using JCE, hit the upload button, browse, shop, upload. Don't know why I'm saying the buttons I'm clicking on. Shop, I must stop. Our online store, shop. Keep the wording consistent. Our online shop. Insert, lovely. Now the PSD didn't have, or the JPEG didn't have uh, any text under it, but I'm just gonna leave that in. And the text here said shop now, so I'll add that in, shop now. Now this might go to a third party shopping cart system. So as long as it can link off, that's all that matters. Put the hash in there, insert, lovely. Let's have a look at this. Should have image, image, text, and a couple of links, but I'll need to do some extra linking at the bottom. Extra styles to these links, I should say. Uh, and I'll probably center the images as well. Do I need to? Yeah, I do a bit. Um, I should center it in the middle. Okay, center it in the middle and do that linking text. So, under here again. I'll do images. Uh, now I think it's display block to treat it as such, so I can actually center it. It goes zero auto. So that should automatically center the images in this, uh, what do you call it, this div area. M-H-A-N-U-O should be able to center it now. And I need to put uh, the links in there. Now I probably have to put classes to this, so I might actually just use this class and uh, apply it to the the links in those two last modules. I'll save that one. While that's saving, I'll go back to here, go into our shop and upcoming campaigns and apply those classes to the links. Um, I'm, I'm doing this because I may wish to put a link on the image. It's a uh, uh, people tend to click on the actual images itself, so I'm going to put a class on this so only the, the button effect actually appears on the text. Now I can do that by going Advance, Classes, Module Custom Link. I'll just put a space in there in case I want to put more classes in, or if there's a class applied to it before. So I'll just go like that, go here and go Custom Output. Same with the the middle module here. 
advance where is it classes space update excellent save and close and I can close these two windows as well so great refresh on the home page and I think we're just about it for this one I uh, could probably do some margin on the images above and below we could see that's been sent it in so let's just go 1m so that will give it a margin above and below the image and I think I'm set for this one yeah definitely needed a margin great and I'll put a margin on these buttons as well this one ah, right I need to put a margin bottom on the actual paragraph itself so list items let's go here paragraph margin bottom 1 M excellent save uploading ticking away come on refresh okay my internet's slowing down come on internet ah resolving host that mean that just means my internet's dead let's see if Google still works yeah okay my internet's dead I have to pause this oh no okay there it goes okay finally kicked back in uh, what was that last change paragraph paragraph margin bottom yeah I think that went in probably need to do a clear or something here yep 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 okay uh, the, not, not perfect let's uh display block no that's not what I wanted yeah not not perfect it's I, I probably don't want to use that webkit inline box uh, won't be cross browser uh, if, efficient so I think I might just have to leave it for now and I uh, have to go back and tweak that but um, that's it okay so we've gone through that top module bit this middle one here and these last three ones so I'm gonna stop this video here uh, the next ones will go through more bits and pieces the footer area building building them out and uh, yeah we'll go from there thanks for watching and uh, make sure you jump on to joomtraining.com.au to find out more about the T3 training course uh, more detailed videos in regards to how actually to build a template using T3. And of course, the Joomla Beat podcast if you want to learn more about the Joomla industry and building websites using that fantastic content management system. Thanks. Bye.